You're listening to WBPPR, Big Pretty Public Radio. An Evening with the Authors is made possible due to the support of Leonard Cohen. It's like music, but creepy and weird. The Teenage Mediterranean Ninja Oysters. Gyros on the half shell. It's not, it's not a typical comedy show where it's like a stand-up comedy show. And it's not a variety show. It's comedians pretending to be authors. And now, an evening with the authors. Fake authors, fake books, real funny. It's a group of comedians, actors, writers putting together a show uh, where comics, actors come out in character uh, and read excerpts from their books that they have written. Uh, they're not real books, uh, but for the purpose of the show, they're, they're real. How are we doing? It was my idea. Just not wanting to do another comedy show, just another run-of-the-mill comedy show. Wanted to do something fun, a little more interesting. Something that we could like, just exercise our, our creative muscles, do something completely fresh, and completely new every show, rather than just regurgitating the uh, 10 minutes of uh, stand-up comedy that we had, like we do at every other local comedy open mic show. Well, I think it's such an original concept, and I don't think, first of all, I don't think Many other places, let alone many other cities, have a performance like this. A lot of people don't realize this. I can also control sea slugs. <laughs> uh, there's a sea slug at the Atlantic Ocean that's the size of the Empire State Building. In its uniqueness, I think it's kind of a catalyst for comedians pushing themselves to be better, performers being better, and uh, audiences to be a little more um, sophisticated, I guess, and to be on the lookout for other shows that are unique around the city. You know, you find one, it's not going to be the only unique show. How you all are? Listen to the I'm really happy it's here. As someone who's from Indiana, and I've lived in other places and I've come back, to see such an amazing comedy scene happening in Indianapolis is so encouraging. And it just proves that the Midwest is a place where things are happening, not where things are dying. But until then, I have a mommy and a daddy and another secret daddy, and that's okay. Character work is really what I do and what I've always done, but there aren't a lot of outlets for that. You know, there's stand-up, there's improv, there's not a lot of sketch in Indianapolis. This show has really drawn out a lot of stand-ups, getting them to step outside of their own person and writing through their own voice and challenging themselves to write as other characters and perform. At noon tomorrow, that kid is going to ride by on the skateboard again. Resist the temptation to run out and bark at him. It's definitely helping me do my improv. It's helping me create characters that are just beyond one scene. It's definitely giving me confidence. Uh, I've only recently started doing stand-up, and this show and, an, and another show are really the things that pushed me to start believing in myself as a like standalone comedian. This is definitely one of the shows that encouraged me. And having other comedians here that are like, yeah, you did great, you can definitely do this, really helped me. It encourages me to write something new that's at least 10 minutes long every month. Now that might not sound like a big deal to some people, but for a comedian, that's a lot to ask. For a comedian of my caliber, that's a lot to ask. You know, I can't just crank that out, so. But this show forces me to do that. And even with the authors is pretty special to me because I studied writing and I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do anything with it. And I always wanted to perform. This is where, you know, confidence comes from. This is where people gave me a chance and clap for me, laugh for me, support me. So this is where I'm building building that confidence. My name, like many things from my planet, neither have a translation, nor are they pronounceable in such a way that you would comprehend. It's also at the White Rabbit Cabaret, which is one of the coolest venues to perform. So you can have a drink, you can sit at a candlelit table, there's a, and the stage is fantastic. Uh, and you'll see a show that's one of a kind, and you'll never see it again. So it's like a, you know, sand mandala. You know, it's like a, it's gonna be here and then it's gone. It's beautiful. There's no such thing as time. He says, what's your opinion on Big Bang Theory Town? This show is probably the most palatable, easy access to get into that and see it because it is a straightforward presentation. And the star was very uh, gracious. They uh, put us out, uh, listed us as uh, one of five alternative theater experiences you have to have. Not sure how they're going to enforce it, 
but that's the wording they use. You have to have it. I don't know if, I don't know if like the DMV comes to your house and does some sort of citation, but you have to have it. And then obviously it was in the Nouveau um, fall guide of things to do. It was, uh, they raved that it was a recurring event. So I think you should totally check it out. Three hours and two sandwiches into the stakeout, Dixon decided to review his notes. Blur Lane had been somewhat vague when she presented him with the case. We're in talks right now, taking the show on the road and teaming up with some promoters in Fort Wayne and maybe Bloomington, Cincinnati, Chicago, where we, you know, we bring some of our guys, you bring some of your guys, and we present the show in, you know, in different areas. It's a comedy show, pretending to be authors. We're going to read some funny books. It's going to be a good time. Go get a beer. Definitely get a beer. Buy some drinks. Uh, support the venue. And then sit down and shut up. Seriously. Thank <laughs> you.